What's up, everyone? Uh, I frequently see things uh, about people wondering what the best way to wash a car in direct sunlight or uh, if you live in a really hot state and you work outside a lot uh, and you're dealing with high temperatures and you don't want to have water spots or scratches on the vehicle from washing. Um, I have had some people argue that well, you shouldn't wash a car in the sun because the paint's hot so you're going to scratch it a lot more easily. Um, I don't feel like that is true unless you are using uh, really crappy towels. Uh, I've been washing cars in the sun for a long time now and have very minimal issues with swirling and scratching. Uh, I actually once had a customer who insisted that I scratched his car up uh, doing a wash out in direct sunlight, uh, but then when I came back later to polish everything out for him, uh, it was discovered that it actually was just uh, imperfections left from the body shop when he had had the, re the car repainted. But he insisted that it was me who had left these scratches from washing the car in direct sunlight using this strange rinseless method that he had never seen before. So if you are going to wash cars in the sun, you have to work outside a lot and you work in high heat like I do here in Southern California, uh, one of the best things that you can do uh, for controlling everything is to do a rinseless wash or a waterless wash because that way you can go panel by panel so you are in control of everything. You decide uh, when to wipe everything down and you can jump right to it with a drying towel right after. Uh, that way you're leaving nothing uh, behind to dry up. You're not pre-soaking the whole car and having the water dry up by the time you get there and risking leaving water marks or streaks or just wasting product because you now have to re-wet the panel. So if you've ever washed a car in, uh, outside and you're using your pressure washer and it's a hot day out, you probably burn through a lot more water and we all know that it's a pain in the butt to have to go back to the water station, refill your tank, uh, and then get back with your day. It adds unnecessary time to everything. So uh, using a rinseless wash, even if you are a pressure washer guy, this will save you a lot of time and money as well. Um, you can wash a car with rinseless wash in about 10 minutes. So what I have here in my pump sprayer is a Fine Lab Pure Rinseless Wash and the reason it looks a little green is because there was another uh, product in there as well before that I didn't quite finish all the way. Uh, so the two have mixed a little bit which uh, doesn't seem to have caused any issues. So uh, I'm going panel by panel here pretty much. So we are what we're sp spraying down one section, uh, giving it a good wipe with my nice soft blue fluffy towel that you can get from detailing.com. Uh, highly recommend having soft towels also uh, to minimize scratching when working in the sunlight. And then as soon as I have wiped everything down, I am jumping right to it with uh, my drying towel. Uh, if you're curious where I got that big yellow drying towel, I get those on Fine Lab's website, finelab.com. Uh, they're pretty superb drying towels. They don't look or feel like much, uh, but they're actually incredibly soft and uh, I've never had any issues with scratching a car. So as I, I explained before, we're in control here. So we've got the door sprayed down, I'm wiping everything down. It doesn't have time to dry up. Uh, I'm having my towel a little bit more saturated than I normally do. Uh, it is advisable with rinseless wash that so you don't want the car to be too wet because it might just kind of drag over everything and not uh, encapsulate dirt the right way. Uh, I remember seeing something about that uh, on an O&R uh, review with the Forensic Detailing Channel guy. Um, and now I'm just jumping right into using my towel. Now there's probably going to be some streaks and stuff left behind because we are working on in the hot sun um, and that drying towel because I'm using it on every panel is saturating a lot more than it normally would uh, when I would if I was you know to work inside and pre-soak the whole car we'd go over it with the blow dryer uh, and, and the towel that way you're blowing most of the water off and the towel isn't really soaking up too much. But in this situation, you're going to want to have a few extra drying towels on hand probably uh, because they're going to saturate with water a lot faster. Um, this will also lead to leaving some streaks and stuff behind, but that's okay because we'll go over it with a quick detailer uh, later on. You can use, I'm going to use this drying towel for the entire car, 
uh, which is going to leave a lot more wet marks. Uh, but I also had learned from a long time ago from uh, Larry at Ammo NYC that sometimes when you use a damp towel to dry, uh, that you actually do minimize the chances of swirling and scratching the paint as well during your drying process. And then, like I said, afterwards, you can go over everything with a quick detail spray to get rid of those. And then the quick detail spray, you're wiping on a pretty much clean surface uh, so you're not dragging any more dirt or dust around and you'll be able to finish the car uh, looking nice without scratching it up. Then, uh, my apologies for the weird black blob. I'm still trying to figure out uh, how to block stuff out with this uh, software I'm using. <laughs> it's trying to block out the client's plate. Uh, some clients don't want you to have their plate numbers and pictures, which is understandable. Um, so if you, uh, just a random detail tip, if you are taking pictures of your client's car, make sure that you block out their license plate um, or take it off first. I don't usually take them off for just regular car washes, but for corrections and coatings and stuff I do. So uh, I've only cut out probably a minute or two of footage so far and we're at a about six minutes and almost done washing the car, uh, at least with the initial step. So uh, as I said, this is a really easy method to wash the car as well. Um, my drying tile at this point is pretty saturated and it's just leaving streaks everywhere, but it's still taking the majority of the water off uh, and we're still going strong uh, in, on this direct sunlight wash, not having any issues with anything drying up. Once you finish the wash, even though we're out here in direct sunlight, uh, you still want to make sure that there's not going to be any drips or anything after. My biggest pet peeve is water dripping out of cracks and crevices after a car wash. That's one of the things I try to offer at Wicked is a drip-free finish. Uh, so grab out an air blower and make sure you blow everything out. Um, if you were to probably just leave, if you were to leave the car sitting for another hour, probably everything would dry up on its own if it's sitting outside. Uh, but you don't want to risk anything dripping out of the mirrors or door jams or trim and leaving some nice watermarks or streaks that would ruin your freshly washed car. So I'm using the Air Blaster Sidekick, which you can buy online uh, for relatively cheap. And then I have this big old vacuum attachment that you guys have probably seen me use a bunch of times uh, to extend everything, which makes this tool a lot easier to use. Uh, so this is a good thing to have in your practice because the one thing that drives me and a lot of other customers crazy uh, is water drips. If you have ever washed a car, you've probably had to run back over and wipe up some drip marks after your customer uh, pointed it out. So just grab another drying towel that's fully dry and start blowing everything out, especially the mirrors. The mirrors on most cars retain a ton of water. Uh, if you didn't know, most cars mirrors you can turn and move uh, out of the way so that you can get everything out. Just be extremely thorough and don't forget the door jams either. Those are also important as well. A lot of those retain a lot of water uh, and especially in the actual door itself, not just the jam that's on the inner part of the car. Uh, there's a lot of water that can store up in those and then drip out. Also, the little like floor plates and stuff that are on the side skirt where it's like the GT3 logo is, uh, those usually collect a lot of water as well, especially if you're pressure washing the car or if you've had to do a particularly heavy pre-soak uh, with the rinseless wash. Now I wanted to show you kind of what I mean on the streaks. Um, so you can see there's some on the glass, some on the hood. Uh, we've got this area over here um, on the quarter panel. But you can see there's a lot of streak marks left behind. Uh, that's what the $25 hand wash guy is probably leaving on your car because none of them are blowing out your car. And if you're just getting like a $25, $30 wash, they're usually not going to apply anything on top. So now, uh, as part of my standard procedure for washes, I have a detail spray that I mix up myself, uh, which has uh, SiO2 based agents in it and it's mostly water so it wipes off really easily but it leaves a super slick feeling behind uh, and it gives the car some temporary hydrophobic properties of I would guess maybe a week or two at most uh, and what I mix in here is I put about five ounces of fine lab ceramic spray sealant and like four ounces of shine supply punch it I don't know 
if I need to mix them both together, it just it used to be punch it, and then I started adding ceramic spray one day when I ran out of punch it, <laughs> and it seems to work pretty well together. And then the rest is water. So this will wipe on and off like a quick detailer that you buy at the store, and it will actually give you some lasting protection, and it will clean up all the streak marks that you left on the car from your wash. Uh, so this really aids also in your outdoor wash, and as I said, since we've wiped everything clean we're just wiping a clean drying towel and quick detailer on and we're not leaving any scratches or swirl marks behind while we do this unless you're using a crappy quality towel so this is a major way to improve your car wash game so now we have this beautiful looking gt3 streak free on the glass and on the paint uh, everything nice and cleaned up this detail probably took me a total of 30 minutes including the wheels and windows uh, and I didn't touch the interior on this one so you can wash a car outside it's not the end of the world uh, it sucks but you can get through it using a rinseless wash I hope this was informative for you guys thank you for watching stay tuned for more exciting detailing content and we'll see you next time